Well, gang, Carolina Jackpot time coming at you Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase here, but before I do that, if you're new around here, give a thimble full of consideration to staying true around here by subscribing to this channel, clicking the like video on this one if you happen to find it entertaining, useful, and uh, otherwise uh, watchable, I guess. We do college football videos here all year long, and we have a heck of a good time doing it. Please stay around. You know, last football season, guys, was not a particularly fun one for Carolina Jackpot. Right? Multiple, multiple times you saw me get on here, do live streams, make videos, uh, get on other people's live shows. I wasn't happy. I uh, wasn't happy with the product that was on the field. I wasn't happy with the coaching. I wasn't happy with the lack of use of the good talent that we had on that football team. And I especially was not happy with some of the losses to teams that I feel like are mediocre to barely above mediocre. Uh, I'm looking at you, Tennessee. I'm looking at you, Clemson, who South Carolina couldn't do dick against, but yet let Kentucky go out up there and run up and down the damn field on them a month later. Uh, I'm looking at Texas A&M. I'm looking at a lot of you guys. I'm looking at Florida. Ah! That still makes me mad. That damn John Cena look-alike catching that damn touchdown pass. That, that son of a that pissed me off. Anyway, get, ugh, I just can't think about it anymore. I gave Shane Beamer a lot of grief last year. A lot. Especially in the second half of the season. Multiple times. But, just like with Coach Boom before him. Coach Boom is Will Muschamp. Those of you that don't know. Those of you who weren't around here back during that time that I would end up uh, all my videos with Go Gamecocks and Go Coach Boom. Uh, 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 woo! Boy, that was a blast from them past. I hope we we'll never hear that again. I, I ended up every year still coming back and defending Coach Boom until I could do it no longer uh, because he's our head football coach and because, uh, you know, if I'm going to pull for the South Carolina Gamecocks, then I was going to have to find some way to at least pretend to find a modicum of support in my soul for Coach Boom. And it's, it's gotten to that point right now with Shane Beamer. He's had one bad season out of three. He overachieved his first season. People thought he'd won three ball games. He won seven. He thought people thought he'd win six ball games. He won eight his second year. No matter how you want to slice it, dice it, fillet it, or say that he came by those eight wins, however you want to say the Tennessee men may have been tainted, or that Clemson men might have been tainted because you had Connor Stallions calling Shane up on his burner phone and giving him all the dirty little secrets. Yeah, whatever. Um, Last year was a step in the wrong direction, and I was not happy with it. And I gave him a lot of grief. But right now, I think he's getting some grief from some pretty dumb people who have some platforms, not just on social media, also in broadcast media, for no particular good reason at all. Take a look at this. was a tweet put out by uh, 97.7 FM in the upstate uh, afternoon radio sports talk show host Mark Ryan, uh, Florida Gators alum uh, and supposed neutral person in the Clemson, South Carolina rivalry. He doesn't uh, pull for, for either team. So he says... This guy's been trying to get under the root of Gamecock fans for more than a year, and he's definitely gotten my goat a little bit, and he's pissed me off with this shit. It's really pissed me off 
with this uh, whole, uh, his take on this Gilbert Edmond transferring back to South Carolina from Florida State thing, equating it to taking your ex-wife or your ex back uh, and then bragging about getting your ex back. Okay, first of all, idiot, <laughs> if you bothered to listen to Shane Beamer's press conference yesterday afternoon, he didn't beg Gilbert Edmonds to come back from Florida State. Gilbert Edmonds asked to come back to Florida State, and when he made the decision to let him back on the team with the counsel of the team, let's get that straight. He went and talked to the team before he even let this guy set foot back in the football facility. No one celebrated it. Okay, He was a good player when he was here. He was a productive player, a productive backup who ended up being a starter due to some injuries back in 2022. I say injuries because we always have them, right? I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. Uh, he talked to his players after talking to Gilbert Edmonds, told him you're not going to get the NIL money you were getting at Florida State. If we let you back, you're not going to wear the same jersey number. I'm not going to promise you a start position. You're going to have to work. The guy said, Coach, I just want to be part of this program again. What do you do in that situation? And I know that I have been one to champion, hey, these fuckers are getting paid, so they're not kids anymore. And, and I said that from a place of anger and a place of rage when I said it. But I say this from a place of kind of looking at the bigger picture. They are still kids. They're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Those are kids. They're going to make mistakes. Did you make a mistake when you were 19, 20, 21 years old? Uh, you're really still a kid until you, you, you can still be a kid until you're like 25. I mean, you just are. And just because they're getting paid doesn't still really make them not kids. If all the kids are getting paid, then getting paid doesn't necessarily make you an adult. And it doesn't keep you uh, in the realm of not being able to make a decision that's not really best for your future. He went to Florida State. He didn't start. Obviously, he's playing behind Jared Verse on that defensive line, an NFL talent. So, I mean, I, you know, obviously you're not going to play. I think he recorded probably about half the production that he did at South Carolina, and he didn't want to be a part of it anymore. He probably, and, and I'm going to tell you this, and this might piss off a Florida State fan, if any of them watch this show, there aren't many of them that we have around here. We do have one that calls into our live show, but I'll go on ahead and say it. I'll say it to him tomorrow when he calls in. He does. Um... I think Gilbert Evans didn't want to be part of that quitter culture at Florida State anymore. I mean, he, he took a look around at his teammates before that Orange Bowl against Georgia. He been at South Carolina. He'd never experienced anything like an Orange Bowl. He was like, man, it's great. Then all his teammates fucking quit on him. All his brothers. Packed their bags, hit the road, man. I ain't playing. I ain't doing it. He wasn't used to that. He wasn't used to that quitter culture. And he probably saw the writing on the wall. Said, I mean, if they're doing this right now, I mean, what are they going to be doing next year? So I don't blame him for getting out of there. I figured he would try to transfer somewhere else. I heard he'd hit the transfer portal. I was like, oh, well. I guess he didn't like it. But Shane Beamer consulted with his team before he let this guy back on their team. Since it's their team and his team. I think he made the right decision. I mean, the guy was productive when he was here. Like I said, didn't cause problems. Why not? I mean, I don't think he's setting a precedent for he's going to do it all the time with anybody. And he clearly said in that press conference, he said there were some Several guys that out there that transferred out of the program, if they asked to come back, he said the answer would be heck no. Probably wanted to say hell fucking no. 
<laughs> it's probably, and I can I can just imagine if he's probably talking about uh, a certain young man at Ole Miss. It's probably who he's talking about. They can say that right now because he's uh, placing. But point being, this guy in the upstate bumps his gums. Um, is clearly a Clemson apologist, uh, and then he will sit here and post things about Dabo about, you know, uh, Dabo, uh, he equated Dabo not using the transfer portal to, and South Carolina using it very feverishly to um, South Carolina's, uh, imagine asking every girl in your class out to prom, and that Clemson is like, if they don't, if the girl who they want to go to prom with is not available, they're not going to ask anybody to prom. Give me a freaking break. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what it is? No, what, what it is, South Carolina's using that transfer portal, and Clemson's not, so I can equate that to South Carolina's getting a bunch of dates for the prom, and they're going to be pounding beaver all night long, and Clemson isn't going to go to the prom because they're not going to ask anybody, and they're going to be sitting in the corner of their closet pounding their pot all night long. That's exactly what's going to happen. There is no way that Dabo can sustain the level of success that he had at Clemson from 2015 to 2020 if he doesn't get with it and start using the portal like everybody else is doing. He's not going to be able to plug holes in his roster where teams like Georgia, teams like Ohio State, are plugging holes in their roster with four- and five-star guys from other teams that either didn't like the NIL deal they got or maybe they didn't like the play time they got. Georgia's got four- and five-star guys sitting on the fucking bench right now. Ohio State, too, has two has. Has two some point. And then you have programs like Ole Miss. you got programs like we saw Mizzou do last year. They were on the come up because they plugged some holes with transfer board people that were quality people. And South Carolina is doing that right now. You can sit here and laugh. You can talk about them picking up guys from the damn group of five or picked up alignment from the FCS. Who cares? Some of them are depth pieces. But I'm going to tell you what. I like the guy from Coastal Carolina they picked up to play wide receiver a lot. I also like the five foot ten little short guy that they picked up from Miami of Ohio that's going to be a like wide receiver as well. I like the running back pickups they got. I got I like some of the line pickups they got. I like this guy that they picked up that uh, was at Georgia Tech and he ended up in Charlotte. Uh, this Demetrius Knight feller, I like him. So you can sit here and make fun of it all you want to, but you're not. You've got holes on your offensive line that need to be plugged. You probably need another running back that needs to be filled up. You you need another. You need another quarterback is what you need. A better starting quarterback is what you need. And I, I don't give a hairy shit about how what his damn Heisman odds are. He's like plus three thousand something to win. Maybe it's worse than that. To win the Heisman, K. Klubnik is on that list somewhere. Uh, the fact that he's on that list is just laughable. It's totally laughable. And all the Clemson fans know it. This guy's not any good. He, he looks scared back there. He, he very rarely looks confident when he's playing a defense with the Pulse. He looked like shit against South Carolina. Unfortunately, our offense is shit, so it couldn't capitalize on it. But the Tater Man knows that that's not the quarterback of the future. It's not a generational quarterback that's going to do things like Deshaun Watson did and Trevor Lawrence did. I think we already know that, that that ship has sailed. And why he's on that list, I have no I have no idea. I think they just had to plug some damn names on there. But uh, Dabo is an idiot for not adapting to what college football has become. And he's going to continue to get left behind. It doesn't matter. And maybe he maybe he does continue to beat the Gamecocks. Oh, you know, so what? So what? He's not going to be enjoying the success. They're not going to make the Pueblo team playoff. They're not. You know why? They ain't going to win that damn conference. They're not. They're just not going to. Teams that are using the portal. Teams that are smart. Coaches that are smart. Coaches that are forward-thinking. Coaches that are with the times. Those teams are the ones that's going to win the damn thing. It's not going to be yours. You, yeah, you can continue to keep on. Well, we're recruiting high four and five star. 
high school talent. That's great. That's great. Three, four, five of them hits the transfer portal every year. And they're going to keep on doing it. This Toriano Pride guy was supposed to be part of your defense. Supposed to be a big part. What did he do? Transfer portal. Antonio Williams. Supposed to be next match thing. Wide receiver. What did he do? Transfer portal. <laughs> you love to see it happening. And, um, guys, I mean, you you don't have to like me. I mean, you don't. I, I don't know. I mean, imagine back in the day. I mean, you know, back back in the 1980s. You know what what happened to the what happened to the grocery store uh, owner who refused to start using uh, a regular scanning uh, checkout and instead said, "I'm not using that thing. This is one where we keep punching numbers in. It's just fine. It'll work just fine." What happened? Well, 30 years later, you're still using that old crappy register. And guess what? You're ringing up about four customers a day, while the one who started using the regular scanner is ringing up about 4,000, and they have all the business. Because you're an old fuddy-duddy, stuck in the 1950s, and you wouldn't change with the times. Dabo's the manual cash register. I'll see you guys later. Appreciate it. Peace. I'm out of here. Go game cuts and go coach Beamer.